let's review how to find the greatest common factor of a set of integers. So the greatest common factor, which we call the GCF, of two or more integers is the largest number that divides all of the given integers. And so the greatest common factor, the GCF, is also known as the greatest common divisor, the GCD. And these are interchangeable. So you might see uh, some books talk about a GCF and other books talk about a GCD. These are the same thing. And there's two methods for finding the GCF. We can list the factor pairs, or we can make a tree. We can make a factor tree. And we're gonna look at each of these methods for a specific example. So let's look at method one, listing factor pairs. And here's the example. Find the greatest common factor of 45 and 60. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna list all of the factor pairs for each number, and I'm gonna start with 45. So I have a 45 and I'm gonna look at all the pairs, and I usually make a little chart like this. So um, let's, let's start with the lower numbers. So in other words, start with the smallest integer that we know will be a divisor, and that'd be one. And I know that one times 45 is 45. How about two? Well, two doesn't work. How about three? Three works, three will go into 45, and if you need to use a calculator to figure it out, you can see. Um, that 3 times 15 is 45. Okay, 4 does not go into 45, but 5 does. Okay, so let's try that. And if we try 5, we see 9 times 5 is 45. And then uh, 6, no, that doesn't work. 7, that doesn't work. 8 doesn't work. But 9 works, but we already have 9 right here. And once you start to repeat, you know that you're done. You don't have to worry about finding any more factors. So let's look at 60 right now. And I'll do the same thing. I'll make my chart. And I can always start off with 1 and the number itself, 60. 2 also works. 2 times 30 is 60. 3 also works. 3 times 20, that's 60. What about 4? Does 4 work? Uh, I think it does, if you think about it. 4 times 15, that's 60. So I gotta keep going here, what else? Uh, five, five works. So five times 12, that's 60. And six works. If I have six times 10, that's 60. So it seems like everything's working here. Seven though does not work. Eight does not work. Nine does not work. 10 works, but we already have 10 here, so we know we're done. So now let's find everything that's common and I'll put a circle around it. So. I have a 1 on each of them, that's common. Uh, I have the 3, that's common on both. And let's see what else, uh, the 5, the 5 is common. And let's see, 45, no, 15, 15 is common. And how about 9, no, 9 does not work, okay. These are the common things. Now look for the greatest common thing. So the largest one we see, that's 15. Let's put a triangle around that one. That is the greatest common factor of 45 and 60. So you could say the GCF of 45 and 60 is 15. Okay, so that was method one. Let's look at method two. Now method two should give us the same answer. So remember we saw with method one that the answer was 15. We should expect when we use method two that the greatest common factor will also be 15. Okay, so let's look at method two, making a factor tree. And so we're gonna look at the same thing, the greatest common factor of 45 and 60. And remember we saw earlier that that was 15. Okay, so to make a factor tree, start with one of the numbers, say the 45, and put that in a box. And we're gonna look for the factors of 45. And again, I like to start with the smaller numbers. Now we're not gonna use one in this case. We're only gonna look at uh, numbers greater than one. Two doesn't work, but three does. So I can make this three, and I'll put a circle around the three because I can't break down the three anymore. Uh, there's nothing else that uh, can, can become, uh, off, come off of this three here, uh, but I can do something over here. Remember that three times 15 was 45. So I'm gonna put that in a box because that 15 can be broken down further. 
Uh, let's see, two doesn't work, but three does again, so I can put a three here. And then I have a five, and the five cannot be broken down anymore. Uh, these numbers here, the three, the three, the five, these are called prime numbers because they cannot be broken down any further. Um, sure, one is a divisor, but remember, we're not considering one here when we're doing the factor trees. Uh, so there's nothing else that can come out of these. So we're done now with 45. Let's look at the 60. So again, I'll start by putting the 60 in a box. And let's see, we're not going to look at one, uh, but two. Two works. Okay, so I can do two, put that in a circle because that is something that cannot be broken down anymore. And then I have a 30 here, and that can be broken down. 30 also can be divided by two. Two times 15, that's 30. And 15 can be broken down. 15 is three times five. Okay, so let's look at the uh, what we have uh, at the end here, all of the roots of our tree here. Uh, or the, I guess if you think of it as an upside down tree, maybe the branches, I don't know. Uh, so what do we have? Let's make sort of a, a little Venn diagram type thing here. So we have in this first circle, we'll say these are going to be the factors of 45. So that would be uh, the things that are at the edges here of our 45. And then this one will be the factors of the other number. In this case, that would be 60. And then what do we have in here? Well, in the middle part, these are the common factors, the things that are factors of both of them. And so what you need to do now is to place all of the numbers that are in circles here. So that would be this three here, the three, the five, the two, the two, the three, and the five into this chart. And so I usually do the common factors first. So I see, for instance, this three right here shows up in both. So I'm going to put that three right here, and then put a little X by it. We're done with that, okay. And then there's a five that's on both, this five and this five, right? So I can put that five there, okay. So we're done with that. Is there anything else that's common? Well, we have a three and two twos. No, nothing else that's common. So the three, that belongs just over here. And each of these twos, this two and this two, they belong over here. And now we see what's common here. The common factors are three and five. Well, three and five, three times five is 15. So the greatest common factor is 15. That's exactly the same thing that we saw before, which is no surprise. We should expect to get the same answer using either method. Okay, let's look at one more example. How about find the greatest common factor of 12 and 18? And I'll do it both ways here. So uh, first, Let's look at the factor pairs of 12. And so I'll make the chart like I was making before. And so I have one and 12, I have two and six, I have three and four, and then next would come four, but I already have four here, so I'm done. And then how about for 18? For 18, I can do a similar thing. So I have one and 18, I have two and nine, I have three and six. Let's see, four doesn't work, five doesn't work, and then we're back to six here. So I know I'm done. Now we can look for things that are common. So I have common ones, twos, threes here, and a six. And I look for the greatest one, that would be the six. And so I see that the GCF, and some people write it like this, GCF of 12, and 18 is 6. Okay, let's try factor tree. So start with 12 here, put it in a box, and let's see, that would give me 2 and then 6, and the 6 goes in a box because that can be broken down into a 2 and a 3. And that's it for 12. How about 18? Put 18 in a box. So I have 2 and 9. 9 goes in a box. And then I have three and three, okay. And now I can do my Venn diagram here. And so this will be factors of 12. That's uh, factors of 12. And then over here, this will be factors of 18. And then in the middle here, I'll write it down here, we have common factors. 
Okay, and now we just got to put them in their proper places here. So I always do the common factors first. Let's see, I see that we have a 2 here and a 2 here. So let's put the 2 in here. I have a 3 here and a 3 here. Let's put the 3 in here. And then I have a 2 and a 3 left over. Those are not common, so this 2 can go here. This 3 can go here. And now I see the common factors are 3 and 2, so 3 times 2 is 6. And I see once again that the greatest common factor of 12 and 18 is 6.